morning, everyone. Chief Bonin, Task Force Leader for Nebraska Task Force One. The sun is shining here in Hope Hill South, excuse me, North Carolina, and people are out getting their lives back together. We're seeing a lot of traffic out on the streets. Most of the roads around here are open. Nebraska Task Force One is still in mobilization mode here at Hope Mills Rec Center. The Cape Fear River has crested and is starting to slowly go down. Everyone on the team is healthy and good spirits, and we'll wait for our next assignment. This morning, I have Chris Gage from Omaha Fire. He's our safety officer, and Dan Ripley from Lincoln Fire, who is our logistics officer. So we will take any questions you have at this point. Yes, Mike O'Connor with the World Herald. Just wonder, um, I know you certainly you know, rescued, uh, you know, uh, uh, people, of course, and but just also curious. I know, um, I know that happened during uh, Hurricane Harvey. But have there been any uh, animal rescues? Have you helped with a rescue any cats and dogs, or evacuate them? No, no, we haven't. We haven't been around any animals. There are a few teams that um, did get some animals and. To be honest with you, I, I didn't look too closely at that. I'm not sure what they did yet, what they did rescue. Hi, William Padmore with um, 1400 KLIN. Um, have, have things been going pretty much according to plan? Have you guys had any uh, sort of unexpected difficulties? or? No, I think things have kind of been going as we expected, there's always a little bit of chaos involved. And, you know, it's, a, it's emergency services, it's emergency operations. So sometimes everything isn't uh, scripted as well as we'd like, but we've been able to adapt and overcome any issues that we've had. William, Would anyone like that? To... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, would anyone like any any comments from our safety officer? He's the one that keeps us safe every day. Yes. Does Chris engage the uh, NET at one safety officer? So what go what what is in William Padmore with fourteen hundred KLIN? What does go into uh, making sure that everyone is safe every day in such a dynamic environment? Well, every morning we have to reiterate uh, some of the safety concerns that we have. Um, anything from hydrating and uh, eating eating as we should to uh, the environment that we're actually uh, out uh, searching in when that when that time comes. Uh, different types of the uh, venomous snakes, uh, the animals that are out there. Um, we have uh, fire ants. Uh, they have everything from potential uh, alligators in the waters, uh, just the environment that we're in and uh, being safe uh, in the flood conditions. Can I ask how um, how you guys have handled the whole hygiene issue? Because I know when flood waters uh, arise in streets like that, it takes a lot of sewage and stuff with it. So can you talk about the precautions you guys have been facing? The precautions we take right away from the uh, beginning of that is we explain what waters to get into and what to stay out of. Um, anybody that's on shore assisting with the boat operations obviously is in waders, uh, waders gloves, uh, personal protective equipment. They never get into the water above those waders, so they're exposed to any of that type of stuff. Um, our water ops teams are in dry suits, uh, which cover pretty much up to your neck. And then you also have uh, boots. And gloves. So the times that we're, as water ops, uh, when we're in the water, uh, we try to keep ourselves from like, any type of exposure that's into the face or anything that uh, would not be covered. Uh, we do have uh, precautionary measures in place. Fire has that team for uh, just a little, uh, even just something minute and, and very uh, little as uh, taking a mouthwash bottle with us if something does come in contact with her um, orally and we, we rinse out real good. And we also have hand sanitizer in to wash down. Now, when we immediately, once we get out of the water, we have a uh, have that team available on scene back at our uh, base of operations where they do a complete wash down of our vehicles, our equipment, our boats, um, anything that we've used in the water, and then ourselves, uh, they completely clean us off, and then we go immediately into a shower. We try not to uh, cross-contaminate our vehicles or our uh, our sleeping quarters and our eating areas and things like that. So we're constantly on the uh, defense of uh, trying not to get that stuff brought back to uh, the general public or anybody who hasn't been in the water. I also have Dan Ripley here, who's our logistics uh, person, he's the one that makes us 
be able to move down the road, make sure that we have food, water, places to sleep, and stuff like that. If anyone has any questions for Dan. I certainly do. I'm here. Go ahead. Dan Ripley with Nebraska Task Force One, logistics manager from Lincoln Fire. Um, can I get your last name one more time, please? Yeah, Ripley, R-I-P-L-E-Y. And uh, I heard from uh, Chief Favnet that the waters are starting to recede a little bit. How are logistics uh, improving as we start to, uh, as Florence starts to dissipate and disappear? Are you yep. seeing less rainfall? And Yeah, I think we're seeing less rainfall. And obviously, when we go into the theater of operations, our task force is 72 hours sufficient. So we bring our own food, water. MRE showers, and for this this deployment, we actually um, were very self sufficient. We operated into about um, 48 hours of our 72 hour task. So that means our task force members were uh, eating our MREs that we bought, drinking our waters that we brought, and sustained themselves. Uh, the local jurisdictions obviously inundated and taxed with taking care of their community, and so. In order for us to not be a burden on them, we bring our own, and we, we tap into that deployment. As, as things do calm down, like you said, we are able to um, work with the Emergency Operations Center here in, in Fayetteville to resupply our cash and then also um, kind of get back up to par so that if they do deploy us to another region or a theater of operation, we're able to, uh, again, bring our own MREs, bring our own water so we don't tax with local resources that are already uh, uh, trying to just support their communities. Do you know if there is any um, any further indication on when uh, the task force will be able to head back stateside, or is it still too early to think about something like that? It's this is Shikoni again. It's a little bit early. I expect to hear something within the next uh, twelve to thirty six hours on when we'll be in demobilization. Okay, um, hearing a lull in the activity, we'll go ahead and um, let these guys get back to work. Um, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we will check back with the task force tomorrow morning at 1030. Thank you.